welcome back to, I don't know, how many years have we been working on my Toyota? As many years as we've been in this place. Enough. Uh, we're working on my Toyota today, and while we wait for bigger things to happen, we're doing a smaller thing. Uh, the smaller thing is the TRD door stabilizers, which is more of a race-inspired uh, cosmetic enhancement modification than uh, than an actual modification, at least in my book. Um, we already did the passenger side, and what this involves is a Phillips screwdriver and some patience. You're going to pull off your door striker, and you're going to put some plastic stuff on your car. And the theory behind this is that the uh, door is then wedged against the body and the chassis, and it creates a more rigid structure, which is supposed to do stuff. Probably nothing. Um, I've already done the passenger side, and I have mixed feelings about this, because it actually doesn't clear, at least on my car, um, some of the original Toyota stuff. But we'll see how it goes on the driver's side before we, uh, I don't know, release judgment. So, um, we might talk about some of the changes since the last time you guys saw the car. There's actually been a lot of work put into the Toyota. Um, but I don't know if we'll get there or not today. So, let's get started. So, it replaces this, it being the, uh, the striker the kit comes with. Uh, it's going to mount like this. So to get that out, you're going to pull out these two Phillips uh, screws. And then this gets put away. All right, when you remove the bolts from the catch, you'll see there's like a lock washer integrated into the bolt. You will need to remove that to install it onto the stabilizer. What we did, it takes some time, but you can just use a pair of dikes or cutters and some needle nose pliers and eventually break it off or you can buy a new bolt or you know a cutoff wheel whatever whatever your method of choice is but we were able to use just dikes and needle nose to break it off and then I guess Tony is telling us that we need to use thread locker to install it I would use uh, so the, re the retaining washer this guy pretty much just make sure that the bolt doesn't vibrate loose because it is part of the door assembly um, seeing how we're removing that because this will actually interfere with the slide um, I would just put these with some blue which just uh, you can still remove them But essentially it makes them harder to remove. It's not like using red, which I would not use uh, The red stuff makes it a pain in the butt to remove this just pretty much prevents it from vibrating free Whenever you do something like this I recommend taking a thread chaser and just cleaning the threads out especially if you're going to use thread locker So let's apply some blue thread locker to this guy And then what you're going to want to do is struggle to hold the whole assembly in place. Once you get one in, it's a bit easier. And you don't want to tighten this one all the way up. I I put it right to the point where it interferes with the slide, which didn't work that time, because I'm doing it on camera. The idea is that you put it in place so it interferes with the slide, so installing this one's a bit easier. And now that you have both of them in, you can start kind of evenly tightening them back up. make sure these are good and tight because they uh, are part of the door assembly and you don't want those coming loose let's uh let's do what we got to do to the goobly gob over here all right so you're going to remove these two screws from your door assembly they're going to be in there pretty good too By having a pretty meaty screwdriver is a good thing. And then you do not need to remove the washers on these. You can just reinstall them. And it's going to go something like that. And 
this one get them started. I'm sure people are going to ask if you can feel a difference in the chassis with this, and we will update them <laughs> in, in 2045. In, in 20 years when the car is driving. The last piece are the uh, plastic goobly gobbers that uh, go on in a specific way. And I think I have this orientation right, but I probably don't. Maybe it's like this? No, that seems wrong. Uh, I think there's instructions. Yeah, they're all on uh, moon, moon runes. Moon runes are... Uh, yeah, like that. You think like this? Yeah, Put probably, that one on the bottom like that. You think it's like, yeah, I think you're right. These are actually the hardest part of the whole fucking install. Because they are... Pain in the dick. Boom. Boom. Look at that. Ta-da! Your installation of uh, race-inspired cosmetic enhancements is over. Ta-da! This one clears. So on the other side, that little black switch for the seatbelt apparently interferes with the catch. Yeah, you can see. Um, so it either needs trimmed or somehow manipulated away from the other one, uh, but this one clears. I bet the chassis is going to be mm, that much more stiff on the road. Oh yeah, we'll definitely be able to tell. Definitely a clear before and after. So on this side, same installation. And there's not really any adjustment in this. So it might just be a manufacturing defect in either the slide or the seatbelt release. So I think there's probably just a, a tolerance where that could be mounted. This? Yeah, there's it's probably been adjusted. I mean, there's no, there's no other adjustment over there. No, I don't mean uh, like we can adjust it, but I think there's a tolerance at the factory, and it's just a little too high. But we can we can file that black piece down and probably make it clear. Yeah, I mean, I've, I adjusted both of these. They don't really have any. Real give. That guy is still cutting that exhaust. Yeah, so even when you loosen that up, it doesn't really have any... And you can remove this all the way, but I'm not going to do all that. It's one of those things where it would eventually just wear itself down. It's actually already wearing into the plastic there. But if any of you know what's going on with that, let me know. Alright, so it's three days after we installed the door stabilizers. The guy over there is still cutting off the exhaust with a three inch angle grinder. I don't have powered one. Yeah. Um, it's actually, he's got little hamsters powering the air compressor to, to spin it. And... This is why I don't use air tools anymore. What do you think? I think you should give a little update on the car while you can. No, no, no. I mean, like, I think it's done. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I didn't hear anything hit the ground. <laughs> um, updates. Okay. Uh, first off, there's a motor. Um, it's an SO20. It's not meant for this. Uh, this is going back into the Project S13. Um, as you can tell, it's kind of gone from being an inexpensive S13 build to being an expensive S13 build. Um, this is fully built in terms of pistons, rods, cams, everything's new. Um, even lifters and rocker arms are new. Um, no cams are in it as of this point, just kind of waiting on that. I have everything I need to do it, I'm just kind of holding off on it. New oil squirters, the whole thing is new. Uh, the turbocharger, nope, there it goes again. The turbocharger is off of Turbo Labs of America getting rebuilt and upgraded for more power. Uh, it's got an air conditioning compressor on it that I recently had rebuilt, although if those are astute will realize this is the wrong bracket, so I have the right bracket on the way with a new tensioner. Um, yeah, you know, it's going to be fun. It's going to be good. It's, uh, 
It's gonna take me a little while yet. Um, I still need an ECU from probably Link. Wiring special release harness and a couple OE parts and then a tune. Um, I expect to blow my transmission up next in the S13. <laughs> so that'll probably be what happens next. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's this. It's coming together. Um, this has actually gotten a lot of work in 2019. Now we're into 2020. Um, it has a whole rear interior, which is something you guys have never seen. So the interior in the back is done and like reupholstered and, and very nice and great. Um, the seats have always been done, but whatever. I'm still waiting on the front door cards to come back, and I have been for two years now. My reupholstery guy is good, but not fast. Uh, once the seats, or I'm sorry, the door cards come back, I've actually gotten everything here done, except for some really small pieces, and then the big ones. Uh, the big ones being the drivetrain. The 8.6 does have, finally, its front headlight housings, a Zenki grill. Hey, it stopped again. Um, I took the power steering rack out of it, and that's actually off getting rebuilt. I am going to maintain my power steering, but there's no rack in the car right now. It has a carbon windshield cow. Um, new windshield, uh, new windshield trim all around, a slightly too big passenger side. Windshield wiper needs to be adjusted. Um, but the, the trim there is a lot of work. Um, Speaking of carbon stuff, we're going to be coming to you guys soon with a, a review of Retrospec, uh, who did a lot of carbon for the car that was not a sponsored deal. Well, it was sponsored, but only like 10%, um, and it went disastrous. So I've given up on working with them, um, and I'm going to be doing like a whole in-depth written review for Facebook and the forums, and then we'll do probably a sit-down review here. For the <laughs> what is that? What even was that? What is that guy doing? <laughs> Regardless, uh, we'll do a retrospective review for the Mark III Super Crowd, because he rakes parts for the Mark III Super Crowd, and uh, an awareness video for the 8.6 community. <laughs> I think that's uh, an air pedal. So <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I remember what was just us here. In any case, we're going to do an awareness video. I know some people have good luck with Retrospec. Uh, I had disastrous luck with Retrospec. Um, I worked for weeks with Paulo and Brian, and eventually they just stopped communicating back. Um, a lot of parts just don't want to get too far into it, but were wrong. Manufactured wrong, manufactured poorly. Um, you could probably make some of them work if you wanted to modify your car. Uh, I do not want to modify the chassis to fit aftermarket parts. That's kind of been the whole staple of this build is tacking things on and off without modifying too much of the original shell. Um, so I'm probably going to pass a lot of that stuff on and just sell it for whatever I can get for it and take a loss. That's what happens sometimes in the car community is you buy some stuff, you have good hopes that it doesn't go the right way, and, you know, the next guy comes into a lucky deal that doesn't have like a beautiful JDM Zenki from Bumper. So, um... Or, you know, parts that he doesn't care about modifying. Did we ever finish the rear brakes? Yeah, the rear brakes are on. Uh, thank you to Brian and Gabe at Techno Toy Tuning. I have my Wilwood set up. My emergency brake cables are on and working. And they're hooked up to the OE handle. And like that whole setup is good to go. So I'm going to cut in front of the camera. Uh, Wilwood four pistons. Upgraded rear rotors. Techno Toy Tuning's uh, four link system pan hard bar, weird performance, uh, axles. We have an install video for those brakes, but we didn't finish it. Yeah, we just need to film the fucking e-brake cable and go. Um, weird performance axles, cause two-way centered diff modified by weird as well. Um, all new bearings and all that kind of stuff. All good to go, and I think it's going to be great. Uh, so next for this car is some cosmetic stuff, like I said, with the door cards and maybe some side skirts and maybe a front lip and some other stuff. I'm going to go with OE stuff from this point with Toyota. What about wheels so we can put it on the ground? Yep, so um, I want to get a set of work equipment ones and tires and then it's transmission. 
uh, drive shaft and the engine. So um, I'll probably get to some of that stuff this year. I don't know if I'm going to get to the engine build this year with this engine build happening. Um, I'm putting a ton of money into this one and uh, this one's much closer to, to doing things. Actually this one only needs the cams and some of the OE parts and the turbocharger and uh, ECU tune wiring harness. And that's really it. Uh, the S13 will be running before this is obviously. Um, but you know it's getting there, and then like, I, I've been against the idea of doing coils on this car, but at this point I might just do coils on this car and change the whole thing. But um, all that's big money stuff that I just don't feel like getting into at this point with that progress project happening. And yeah, so one thing at a time. But that's a general update of where everything is. I'm still working on this stuff regularly and uh, pretty consistently. And Mike's here helping me, and Brad's here helping me, and Ryan has been you know, instrumental in the S13 build. We followed that build with the factory service manual, page for page. Uh, what about your stuff? Anything? Any questions that you have? Uh, not that I can think of. I think that's it for this video. Cool. Well, we will see you guys next time. Hopefully you'll see the uh, S13 running soon. And, uh, It'll have air conditioning and four-wheel steering and ABS and... Everything the Supra doesn't. Yeah. Yeah, did you see this? Do you see how far off these are misaligned because I got the wrong bracket? I don't see a problem. Just the belt would just have to... There's no problem. Yeah, I got you can, the... You can get that right angle adapter for a serpentine belt. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not a problem. So if you guys want, like, specifics on this build um, or any specific questions here, let me know. Otherwise, I got some very nice paperweights that don't do anything. <laughs> you got a Ranger. Yeah, I did get a Ford Ranger. I got the new Ranger. It's nice. It's a good daily. I get like 24 miles per gallon out of it. Yeah, it is nice. It is nice. It's a good up and down the road car. So that's it for me. I'll see you guys next time. Uh, like, comment, subscribe. Follow Michael on Instagram. Uh, let us know if you want to see more S13 or A86 content. Mike has like... 200 gigs of S13 content. I don't know if I have it anymore. Oh. Oh, that actually hurt. <laughs> I should. I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look. Mike had like 200 gigs of S13 content that's like four years old now that he never bothered to uh, do anything with. So if you guys want to see that, you might want to pester Mike on that. <laughs> and uh, see you guys next time. Okay, bye.